space. White space or negative space is probably the most important aspect of design. Regardless of what you call it, you should be familiar with it and how to use it effectively. I wanted to start this series off on a topic that makes the biggest impact, something that can be the difference between information thrown on a page and a well thought out website design. Wikipedia defines white space as the portion of a page left unmarked. Margins, gutters and the space between columns, lines of type, graphics, figures or objects drawn or depicted. On a page like this, the margins are the gaps between the content and the edge of the page and the gutters are the gaps between columns of text. The terms white space and negative space are often used interchangeably, but negative space can often have some more complex connotations, so we'll stick to white space to avoid any confusion. Let's have a look at some examples. Remember our definition? Margins, gutters, columns, lines of type, and graphics. So some good examples, let's start with rockawayrelief.com. First, pay attention to the margins, and now the type. Our next example is medium.com. Again, pay attention to the margins and the gutters, the type, and now the spacing around the graphics. So let's look at a less successful example. Archive.org. You might know it as the home of the Internet Archive Wayback Machine. Margins, type and graphics, all crammed together. Well, that about says it all, right? Mm, almost. Let's take some practical examples and make use of white space. Typography is a topic for an entirely different video. But for now, let me recommend practicaltypography.com. The author, Matthew Butterick, makes some great recommendations. It's my go-to typography reference. Remember, these are guidelines, not hard and fast rules, but you need to know the rules before you can break them. Let's not go into typeface choices just yet. There are plenty of opportunities to improve how your site looks simply by putting white space to use in your text. Here's how. Font size, or point size to the real typographers out there. Butterick has some really simple guidelines on how to size your text. In print, the optimal point size for body text is 10 to 12 point. On the web, the optimal size is 15 to 25 pixels. There, easy. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of you have much smaller text on your sites. The connection with white space here is simple. The larger the text, the larger the space between the type. Line height, the vertical distance between lines of text. It's obvious how this adds more white space, and as a guideline, I'll quote Butterick again. For most text, the optimal line spacing is between 120% and 145% of the point size. Margins and gutters. This is a compound issue. Your gutters and margins are affected mostly by your intended line length. You'll have to figure this one out by yourself and adjust it accordingly, but there are numerous and varying recommendations for the optimum line length. Most sources recommend somewhere between 40 characters and 90 characters, or between two and three alphabets. The page. Google's material design language talks a lot about sheets of paper. In material design, every pixel drawn by an application resides on a sheet of paper. It's good to think of your site in this way. As you might remember from our examples, the text sits directly on the page. When your text sits on the page, the page
page itself becomes white space. If you put something between your text and the page, the page remains white space and the background becomes an element of your design. So, add white space by removing clutter between the text and the paper. To demonstrate how these simple adjustments can affect the aesthetics of a page, let's update a sample page which looks admittedly lacklustre. I've taken a sample HTML5 boilerplate template from initializer.com and I've added some basic styles and content. I'll start by adjusting the font size and the line height in the CSS. A little bit more readable already. Next up is the line length. The first sentence of Laura Mipsum happens to be about right, so I'm going to aim for that. Finally, let's remove the background and let the page work on its own. This example isn't going to win any awards, for design or for development, but it does show the difference that the application of Whitespace can make. Page layout is another topic for a future video, but when thinking about your page layout, here's a couple tips. Separation. White space is often better at dividing content than a line, border, or an edge. Be consistent. Your gutters and margins should match, but column widths may vary. Less is more. You don't have to be working on an entirely minimalist design to think about including only what is absolutely necessary. Remember, the less you have going on on your page, the less can go wrong with your page. This is the first in a series of web design and development videos brought to you by me, Anthony Malloch, and ReviewYour.Website, five minute video website reviews. If you wanna see more episodes, please subscribe, like, and share this video. If there's a specific topic you'd like to see, get in contact through email, Twitter, or Reddit, and you'll find links to my references and more information in the doobly-doo. Thanks for watching.